In this video, I'd like to consider the concept of balance of mass or conservation of mass. And I want to look at two forms of the conservation law. One is something I'll call a global law. And that's the type of thing that you would say measure in a laboratory. And the other one is a local law, which is an equation that will actually allow us to solve various types of engineering problems. So that's going to be our, our, our goal. Now, we're going to start with our, our usual setup where we'll have a body B and material points labeled by capital X. And the body deforms and has, occupies a new part of our three-dimensional space. Uh, and we'll denote that by BT. And the material point that's located at capital X ends up at the location little x after mapping by the deformation map. Okay, so now if I zoom in at this point capital X and look at a small chunk of material of volume V, it will have some kind of density. We'll call that rho r. So that's the reference density of the material at that point. And if I multiply that density by this volume, assuming the volume is small, I'll get the mass of this little bit of material here. Okay. Now, I can do something relatively similar around this, the deformed location, little x. And if I look at the exact same material points, they may occupy a new volume. I'll call that volume Vt. And the density of the material here, I'll call rho. And so rho depends on where I'm looking, so little x. And it can be a function of time if I have a time-varying deformation. And the mass of this chunk of material at time t is going to be the density rho times that volume vt. Now we know from before that the, the volume stretch is given or by the Jacobian determinant of the deformation gradient, so j. So vt is equal to j times v. The other thing that we know is that we're looking at the same set of material points. So the mass that I start with is going to be equal to the mass that I finish with. So this is what I would call global mass conservation. It's something that you can observe in the laboratory. Okay. Now, if I, if I put my two statements together, I find out that the reference density rho r times the initial volume that I started with uh, is going to be equal to my new density rho times j times v. So I can cancel the v's from both sides, and I find that the reference density is equal to the density after deformation times the Jacobian determinant. And, and please note that in this relationship here, this little x is the little x that one gets by evaluating at the big X that I'm looking at. So I start with the reference density of material around some particular point located, material point located at capital X, and I evaluate now the density at little x corresponding to that point capital X. So that's important in this. Okay, so this is this statement here is a local statement of balance of law mass. Okay, so this is kind of an argument for how we write down mass conservation on a point by point uh, way. So, so it's a, it's an equation that holds at every point in the body. Now. I would like to make this argument a little bit more precise, so I, I kind of weighed the hands a little bit here with respect to the mathematics. So uh, let's go ahead and look at a slightly more formal definition. So we have our, our, our same setup. We have a body, and now let's look at a finite part P of that body, and which deforms into a body BT, and this part P deforms into a part of the body PT. Okay. Now. If I look at the material points that are located in P, they end up in PT. So the mass of P is equal to the mass of PT. And we can write down the mass of our part using this knowledge in two ways. One is I can take the density, the reference density, and integrate over the reference locations of the material points. And so if I do that integral, I get the mass of P. And But I also know that that's equal to the mass of PT, which I can write as the integral over PT of the spatial density rho as a function of little x time integrated dv. And this equality here, that's really the statement of global mass balance. That's saying that the mass of P is equal to 
the mass of PT. Okay. Let me be a little bit more precise about what I mean by these integration volumes. So dVr is d capital X1, d capital X2, d capital X3. And the integration volume little dv is d little x1, d little x2, d little x3. Okay, so, so I'm just integrating with respect to two different coordinates over the same bit of material here. Now, what I can do is do a change of variables on the second integral here. And I can write that as an integral over dvr, so with respect to the capital X coordinates. And so I'm doing a change of variables from little x to big X. And I'm going, as we do always do in multivariate calculus, when I do that change of variables, I need the Jacobian determinant of the change of variables. In this case, it's going from big X to little x. So this is just the determinant of the derivative of little x with respect to big X, which is the determinant of F, which we usually call J. Okay, so this is just a rewriting of it. And the, the positions of little x now are taken as functions of big X. So I can take the third integral here and put it together with the first integral and put them all under one integration over the part P. I'll have the reference density minus the spatial density times the Jacobian is equal to zero. And this has to hold for all parts P in the body B. And so now I can use the localization theorem and that will tell me that the reference density is equal to the spatial density times the Jacobian. And so this is the statement of local mass balance derived a little bit more formally than uh, we did in the, the previous construction.